In early December of 1994, a series of storms dumped more than a foot of snow near Grand Falls in Newfoundland, Canada, turning the town into a winter wonderland. But for Mona Hammond, with the storms came a frightening reminder of how fragile life can be. Your lunch, because Kimmy's going to give you lunch. Mom, I'm going to run down. I love having Frankie. All right, he ahead. just uh, makes my day. If you met him for five minutes, she would, she'd fall in love with him. That's the way he is. Step here. I never thought I'd have a little brother. Thought I'd be the last child. So when he came along, it was wonderful. Around 12:45 p.m. Mona went to run a few errands, leaving her daughter, Kim Perry, in charge of her four-year-old half-brother. Frankie, you be a good boy for Kimmy. Uh -huh. All right, see you later. See you. So actually, I babysat a lot. Made me realize I didn't want any of my own. <laughs> Kimmy, can I go outside to play? No, Frank. Wee, wee, wee. Well, after you finish your lunch, okay? He was determined to... So I dressed him up, and then he went out. He's not the type of little boy that runs away or goes out on the street or anything like that. Around 1.25 p.m., Mona returned to the house. Frankie! Mom's home! Kim, where's Frankie to? He's gone outside. How long ago did you put him out? About ten minutes ago. Frankie! I just couldn't see no, no trace of him anywhere. And then I saw his footprints. The footprints led from our back door right down to the bank, and then there was no more footprints whatsoever around. At 1.32 p.m., a call for help came into the Grand Falls Windsor Fire Department. I bring your shovels with you. Volunteer firefighter Vince McKenzie headed to the scene. When the dispatcher said, bring your snow shovel, that really struck me odd. You don't fight fires with snow shovels. So the track didn't go back? No. When Kim got a hold of Frankie's father, Ed Hammond, he immediately left work to come home. Oh, what happened? Frankie. My wife, she was she was sure he was down under the snow. I think, you know, we're all... Couldn't believe it, really. Check the house. I could hear people in the background saying, well, we might never be down there. You call it mother's intuition, but I just knew he was where he was. I think he must have thought I was crazy. Did you check the park and everything more? No, I don't check the park. I think you should check the park and make sure he's not over there. I was thinking and hoping that he was gone somewhere else. He was gone to his friend's place or he was over at the park. Tripped up and down the streets all around the block, and then I went to the park. And there was no footprints, not a soul over there. And I said, I just know I'm not going to find him anywhere else. I said, I know he's at the bottom of that snowbank. I had to double check the house. Went over to his friend's place. And never saw no sign of Frankie. Nobody seen him around at all. And it just started to sink in that he is down underneath there. More than 50 volunteers had come to help look for the little boy. But by this time, he had been missing for more than 30 minutes. I remember really feeling for the parents. But it wasn't actually confirmed that the child was underneath the snow. I was really hoping and praying that he wasn't there. Frankie! 
I went in Frankie's room and I saw Frankie's toys. And uh, I said, my gosh, I said, only a few minutes ago he was there playing with his toys. I uh, grabbed all of his teddy bear because Frankie used to sleep with his teddy bear all the time. And I just, I just had a feeling, I just said, Frankie, just hold on for a minute. I said, we're going to find you. Crew Captain David Byrne was a 23-year veteran with the fire department. I really thought we were going to find a body rather than a, a live four-year-old. Under this much snow, if not for lack of oxygen, for just weight and everything else. Boys, hold it. Everyone turn their shovels upside down. Driving down in the snow, when you think you hit bottom... But my feeling was, if this little boy has any chance at all, we're going to have to find him now. If you don't hit nothing, don't shovel the snow. One lady said, gosh, it's been down here over an hour now. It seemed like only five minutes to me. I said, after an hour, I said, my gosh, he would be still breathing when they pulled him out of there. Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officer Joe Saunier was among those searching for the boy. I was at the bottom of the hill. I put the shovel down and I struck something soft. Come on, guys. Right here, right here. Come here. Come here. Go. Yes, something. Yes. Come on, right here, guys. Here. Yes. Found him. Come here. Boys, get back now. Come on. Use your hands, guys. Come here now. Hurry. Right here. We're digging about a foot, two feet, and then all of a sudden you find his hat. Okay. Give me your hand. We go. Run the body. There was such a large area. To actually okay. find the young fellow was a miracle. Wait, I thought the young boy was dead. Take it easy. Take it easy. I moved the snow away from his face, and then all of a sudden he blew out a puff of snow out of his nose. Frankie had been buried for more than 70 minutes. Come on! We got him! Come on! Okay. He's alive! I said, oh my gosh, I said. What? That was he. And he said, we don't know. He said, but he's still breathing. When he was placed in front of us, it was, it was like buried treasure. And a little child, still breathing. It was a, it was a good feeling. After he was up to the ambulance, then it really hits home, and tears came to my eyes. I thought to myself, this could have been my son. At Central Newfoundland Regional Health Center, four-year-old Frankie Hammond was put under the care of pediatrician Heinrich Stander. How Frankie survived underneath the snow for that amount of time, with the amount of oxygen that would have been available to him, it still remains a bit of a riddle. He was still unconscious, but the doctor told us to get down and whisper in his ear. I said, Frankie, I said, uh, Mommy and Daddy's here now. I said, I said, you're going to be okay now. And the two eyes just shot right open. Okay. It's close to the time I came to cry in there when I saw him, there were the two eyes open up looking at us. Here, Mommy. I was trying to climb up, and then all the snow fell down. Kaboof! Snow was going in my mouth so quick, I couldn't breathe. I tried to call for help, but they couldn't. They couldn't hear me. They were too far, far away. Okay. Okay. Frankie's doing great. No after fix. No nightmares. He's the same little kid. Same happy-go-lucky guy. Frankie is over it, I'm pretty sure. Now it's a big problem for me and the mother to get over it. There we go. There you go. Hey. 
he tried to forget about it. But there's not a day goes by that I don't look out that back window and think about what, how close we came to losing Frankie. I think the biggest miracle in the whole situation is the fact that his mother had a sixth sense to sense that he was, he must be underneath the snow. <laughs> be careful when you play in the snow, because it may bury you up. That's it.